I will try to, again, based on our Greater Mekong Separation Corporation. But in the past, we export a lot of primary goods uh, to other uh, developed countries. Now, because of the cooperation, for example, Cambodia now would uh, sell rice to Thailand or Vietnam, then Thai would process it, and Vietnam would process it, and then, then we add value on the way. By the time it get out of the region, it's already become the value products. The same thing, the, uh, because of we are promoting single production base, single market between the GMS country, and also later will be with the ASEAN country. That means company, the local company, in Thailand can have the set production base in Cambodia, or the Cambodian company can have production base in Laos with uh, free movement of goods and, and, and labor. So I think more and more in the future, the goods and services that come out from, from the Mekong region and probably later from ASEAN will, will probably mostly will be the final product, or if not, it's almost final. I think that because we are uh, helping each other in terms of material resource, technology and labor. It, it add value a lot of the way before it reached you in Europe. We, we already add all the value. So I hope that answers some question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I could give our talk to answer the question, but very briefly, I think, yes, there are differences. No, there are no differences if you would focus your question on Japan as a donor. Because uh, what we are seeing now resembles very much the relationship that Japan had with China uh, 40, 50 years ago, when China was delivering the raw materials and uh, Japan was investing in China and then there was a technology transfer that was being built up in the context of these investments. So in, in that respect, there is some similarity with the Japanese way of doing things and today Korean ways of, of doing things. Another important difference, I think, which has been stressed uh, by uh, Dr. Shai uh, at the beginning is he, he stressed very much we, we're coming from that situation. So we know much better than the very industrialized donor agencies that are very much driven by bureaucracies, long-established bureaucracies. Uh, we know much better what on the ground is needed. And the implementation on the ground is facilitated also by people who move there, who are moved on the ground, into the hinterland, away from the very climatized four or five star hotels, but really where, where, where it's hot and where you're sweating. And I think uh, th these are some distinctions between new and old. But some questions never die. For example, or one, some wisdoms never die. I think it's always good to have several eggs uh, in not just one basket, but in several baskets. And that uh, several baskets, and that, that is certainly an insight that holds very much and is very much also uh, informed again by our new uh, insights from the African Economic Outlook that we have different talents to play and that we have uh, we can improve our negotiation our bargaining situation now that we have different actors who are in, in a way also competing sometimes for exhaustible resources then I would make a last sentence. What you have observed, let's say, 10 years ago, is not uh, enough evidence for policy prescriptions for the next 10 years. Because countries such as China are evolving so quickly that they are getting a fairly sophisticated export structure. The wages are rising fairly quickly. And therefore, we are now seeing uh, looking at African countries, signs of a global product cycle a la Vernon that is actually intact. And we are seeing more and more manufactured exports from Africa to China. Uh, and 
and uh, we are also seeing more manufacturing industry activity. So what we have observed, let's say, in the early 2000s, when everything was raw material oriented, is over now that there are wage pressures and pressures to get off from very standardized uh, manufacturing productions in China. They are advocating. There is a lot of activity, uh, of course, in the neighboring countries in Asia, but certainly also in Africa. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues, I think we're at the end of the session. I must apologize. Um, we've run over time. We started late, but we've also gone late. Um, we're a relatively small group, I think. I would like to suggest that we first put our hands together for the excellent presentations that have been offered to us. Thank you. And then I, my suggestion is that we break for a very short period, very short period, let's say 10 minutes. Um, coffee is just outside, if I'm not mistaken. It will allow us to get back on track and then complete the proceedings. Thank you very much. Thank you.